Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabber Time. Today I'm going to go over systems of equations in two variables and the three cases, independent system, inconsistent system, and dependent system. Of course, with some examples. Let's get into it. Systems of linear equations in two variables. An independent system has exactly one solution that is called the pair x, y. The point where the two lines intersect is the only solution. It's a, a graph that supports that and makes it clear. This is called independent system. Uh, they, the two lines, they meet at 7 over 5 and negative 11 over 5. One solution means independent. Here's the other case. An inconsistent system has no solution. Notice that the two lines right here are parallel lines and will never intersect. That's called inconsistent. No solution. The third case is infinitely many solutions. When you grab the first line and you try to grab the second line, they are the same line. They coincide has infinitely many solutions, the lines are coincident, and they are the same line. So every coordinate pair on the line is a solution to both equations. We're going to, of course, see some examples. So I think if you want to uh, distinguish between the words dependent, independent, dependent means same line. They depend like exactly the same. Like if I say x plus y equals 5, and I say 2x plus 2y equals 10, that is pretty much the same. So they depend on each other uh, by a factor of 2 and so on. Inconsistent, no solution. Independent, that means I'm going this way, you're going the other way. So they are independent. Uh, different slope and different y-intercept, that's another way to say it. Determine whether the ordered pair 5, 1 is a solution to the given system of equations x plus 3y equals 8 and 2x minus 9 equals y this is a quick and simple example all what we need to do is to check if 5 1 belongs to the first line and belongs to the second line that means is it the point of intersection or not substitute substitute the order pair 5 1 into both equations for the first one, we have 5 instead of x, we have 3 times 1, 4y, equals 8, question mark, we're trying to see if that is true. Yes, 5 plus 3 is 8, which is 8 on the right side, true. For the second one, I'm going to plug in 5 here, I'm going to plug in 1 here, as you could see, and I'm going to test it. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 9 is 1. Yes, it agrees with what we should expect, so the answer is yes. This means that the order pair 5, 1 satisfies both equations, so it is the solution to the system. That's what this example is all about. So uh, to check if a point belongs to the solution or the intersection point, you just plug it in in each one of them. That means it lies on this line and also it lies on this line. We saw from the first graph that they intersect at one point. To support that, uh, they're not asking to graph it, but here's the graph. This is how it looks like graphically. 5, 1. 5, 1 is actually the point of intersection. It fits the x plus 3y equals 8 and it fits in it checks in the 2x minus 9 equals y. Solving a system of equations in two variables by graphing. Solve the following system of equations by graphing. The, identify the type of system and tell me if it's dependent, independent, or dependent. Graphing both equations using the slope intercept form. So, one way to do it is rewrite everything in y equals mx plus b and solve. Here's the first equation, 2x plus y equals negative 8. 
we're going to solve for y by subtracting 2x from both sides. I get this cancelled or cancels y equals minus 2x minus 8. That is the slope intercept form. So you start at negative 8 on the y axis and you go down to over 1 and that's how we graph it. Let's look at the second equation. x minus y equals negative 1. Solving for x, so, sorry, solving for y. So I could write it as y equals mx plus b. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. I get negative y equals negative x minus 1. I need y by itself. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Left side becomes y. And right side, I have to distribute the minus sign or minus 1. And it gives me x plus y. As you can see, they have different y-intercept and different slope. Graph both equations on the same set of axes. And here's the graph. First one, you start at negative 8. You start at negative 8. You go down 2 over 1. This is 2. You could see the scale, and this is 1. And that is the slope. Of course, you have to extend it. This one here starts at 1, right there, halfway between 0 and 2, and has a slope of 1. This is a slope of 1 because of the scale. From 1 to 2, that's 1 rising, and running 1, as you could see from here. Extend the line, and they meet at negative 3, negative 2. So the solution to the system is negative 3 and negative 2. Of course, we could check the answer by plugging the numbers in the first one and the second one. So the system is independent. One solution means independent. Now, I did the whole thing in slope-intercept form. It's good to experiment and practice different ways of graphing. Same problem. This time, I'm going to do it by using the standard form ax plus by equals c. It's written to me in standard form. And to use the standard form, we use the x-intercept and the y-intercept concept. Here we go. The first equation, 2x plus y equals negative 8. To find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. As you could see, because while you are on the y-axis, your x is 0, and that's how we do it. This cancels, and I get y equals negative 8. So 0, negative 8 is my y-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we set y equals 0, the other way around. So you plug in 0 for y, I get 2x equals negative 8, so x equals negative 4. So the point is negative 4 for x and 0 for y. Taking the other equation, x minus y equals negative 1. The y-intercept, of course, you set x equals to 0. You plug in 0 here for x. I get minus y equals negative 1. Or differently, multiply by negative 1, you get y equals 1. So the y-intercept is 0 for x, 1 for y. It intersects the y-axis at 0, 1. To find the x-intercept, we set y equals 0. We plug in 0 here for y. So the x-intercept is negative 1, 0. Now we know the intercepts for both equations. Here's the graph. For the green one, 0, negative 8 is down here. Negative 4, 0 is to the left. Mark this point, mark this point, and connect them. 
for the blue line or the blue uh, marker here, I have the second equation x minus y equals negative 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 here, and negative 1, 0, negative 1, 0, the x intercept. Mark them, connect them, and look for the intersection point. That's another way to graph. Sometimes it's easier to graph in slope intercept form. So it's good to know both ways of graphing. So the system to the, or the solution to the system is negative three, negative two. Again, I'm repeating myself to emphasize that it's one solution and we call it independent. Now I'm going to do the same problem using substitution. To use substitution, I need to solve for one variable and plug it in the second equation. Let me show you how. We're going to solve the second equation for x. What do I mean by this? Here's the second, the system, the whole system. My focus is on this x. I want to leave this x alone by itself. So I'm going to move the minus y to the other side and make it positive y or add y, add y. And now I have the new system, but x on the second equation is by itself. We're going to take this x, which is equivalent to y minus 1, and replace that x in the green color with the expression y minus 1. Now we substitute the expression y minus 1 for x in the first equation. That clearly says what to do. As you can see, we do the distributive right here, 2 times y and 2 times minus 1. I get 2y minus 2. Bring this down, bring this down. Combine like terms, I have 3y, 2y and 1 y. Add 2 to both sides to solve for y. I get 3y equals negative 8 plus 2, which is negative 6. Divide both sides by 3. Negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. Now let's solve for x. We could use either one of the equations, it doesn't matter which one. Let's use the second one, it has less numbers in it. Of course, you could practice and use the first one. We know that y equals negative 2, so I'm going to plug in negative 2 here, or replace y with negative 2. Be careful with the minus sign, the subtraction, and the minus sign. That's why I'm using different color to show you that this is a subtraction. This came with a minus sign, which now changes to plus. Subtract 2 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 3. Just as expected, it's the same problem. They both meet at x equals negative 3 and y equals negative 2. As you can see, I'm repeating myself. The answer is negative 3, negative 2. And we call the system independent one more time. Same problem for more practice. I'm covering the whole idea as you could see here. Uh, this might be a lengthy video, but I have enough ideas and examples in it. So uh, I'm sure that this video could be marked and you could go back and watch it more than once. When I have a chance, after I upload the video, I'm going to put these examples and the timestamps in the description below. So you could come back and visit. Uh, you don't have to watch the whole video. Just click on uh, solving by substitution, solving by graphing, solving by standard form, solving. You're going to see them all with timestamps. Okay, now let's go and find another method, which is what? We did the graphing by slope intercept. We did graphing by standard form. And we just finished by substitution. Now the second method is going to be by addition. Some books they call it elimination. And here we're going to call it by addition method. 
let's see how the addition method works. Of course, we're going to get the same answer. And that's the beauty of math. As long as you're doing it with correct logic and steps, you should get the same answer. Here we go. It's ready for addition. So if you have the choice, and you saw the four methods, I think this is the easiest one for now. Why? Because the Y cancels. It's ready. The X's are lined up, the Y's are lined up, and the constants are lined up. All what you need to do is make a line, add, and you'll be fine. Add the X's, add the Y's, bring the equal sign, add the numbers. Here we go. Once we have this, I have 3x on the left, and I get negative 8 and minus 1, which is negative 9. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 to solve for x. Negative 9 over 3, which is negative 3, as expected. Now, let's solve for y. We could use either one. I'll use this time the first one. Plug in negative 3 for x. And this is how we do it. Simplify 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. To solve for y, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. Now I get y equals negative 2, just as expected. I'm repeating myself again. The solution to the system is negative 3, negative 2, and we call the system independent. Now, the addition method here was so ready to be used. I didn't do much. All what I did is just like it. put the line and start adding. Why? Because the Y cancels. But it doesn't come ready all the time. Sometimes you need to adjust, multiply the first equation by a number or the second one equation by a number to make things uh, ready. What do I mean by ready? If you want to cancel the x, they have to be the same amount but opposites, like 2x and minus 2x, y and minus y, if you want to cancel the y. So sometimes you want to multiply the second equation by negative 2 if, if you want to cancel the x. Sometimes you end up multiplying both equations by numbers. So it's not too much work to do, but as long as you know what you're doing and you are getting the same amount, opposite signs, that should do it. Let me give you some examples. Here's an example. About what? Using the addition method when multiplication of one equation is required. Solve the given system of equations by the addition method. Well, looking right here, if I make a line and say add, the y doesn't cancel, the x doesn't cancel. I know the numbers cancel here for some reason, but no, I want to cancel x or y. So, if you multiply the second equation by negative 3, the x terms will add to 0. This is 3x. If you multiply this equation by negative 3, focusing on the x, that becomes negative 3x. Then they will cancel. And this is how I'm doing it. I'm using different colors to show you that or make things uh, stand out. I'm multiplying by negative 3. So I don't want to use red all the way. You just use distributive and simplify it. Now the new system, I don't have to use colors anymore becomes 3x plus 5y equals negative 11. And the second equation after we multiply by negative 3 both sides is negative 3x plus 6y, negative 3 times negative 2y, 6y, negative 3 times 11, negative 33. Now I'm ready to add because the x cancels. Same amount, opposite sign. Looking at the y's, I have 11y. Adding the numbers, it's negative 44. Divide both sides by 11, I get y equals negative 44 over 11, which is negative 4. All right. Now, we need to solve for x. Now, substitute y equals negative 4 into one of the original equations and solve for x. I'm going to take the first one right here. 
3x plus 5y equals negative 11. One more time, doesn't matter which one. We know that y equals negative 4, so I'm going to replace this with negative 4. And 3x minus 20 equals negative 11. I have, so I showed the graph before the end. I'll take it back. Add 20 to both sides to solve for x. I get this cancels. 3x equals 20. Take away 11, 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3. I get x equals 9 over 3, which is 3. So the answer is uh, 3 and negative 4. And the system is independent. To show that graph to support, all right, we don't need that, but here's the detailed graph. 3 and negative 4 is where they meet. That's why we call it independent. One solution means independent. Okay, now this was by addition method when we had to multiply one equation by a number. Now let's take another one, but this time you need to multiply both equations. 2x, 5x, 3y minus 10y. They're not even close to be added. It's like I need a common denominator or I need a common multiple, least common multiple. So let's cancel the x's. You could do it either way, of course. To cancel the x's, I need the 2x and the 5x to be fixed and changed to a number that is the same amount, first equation, second equation, but opposite sides. So if you're doing fractions, 1 over 2, 1 over 5, the common denominator between 1 half and 1 fifth will be a 10 in the denominator. So I could fix the 2 and make it 10. I could change the 5 and make it 10 by doing the following. Of course, I need the opposite idea, so one of them has to be multiplied by a native. Notice if I multiply the first one by native 5, this here becomes negative 10. And if I multiply the second equation by 2, this right here becomes 10x. And I'll reduce the explanation of the distributive property because that's not the point here. I want to show you enough ideas about substitution, elimination, or addition method in different ways. So let me reduce the talk right here. You could see it and verify. This is what I have. And I'm using colors to highlight what we are focused on. Hopefully that helps. See, my notes are more like lectures, but speedy lectures, like we know details without the extra steps when I can eliminate. The colors and the figures do help a lot. Uh, we're all visuals, so seeing colors, seeing it exactly with audio, let's say, what is happening, that should help more than textbooks, which is a little bit dry to read and follow up exactly what they're trying to send. So that's this is the whole thing about my videos. Let's uh, keep going. So this cancels, and now the y is negative 15 x. Uh, that should be y actually. It's uh, written with well, looks like an x, but it, I was writing fast. Negative 15 y minus 20 y is negative 35 y. 80 and 60 is 140. Divide both sides by negative 35. As I say, like I'm trying to reduce those steps and stay focused. And that's why if you see me in the videos, I'm just like going on and on because I don't want to waste your time guys and try to focus on the math steps and concepts so y equals negative 4 now we substitute y equals negative 4 into the original first equation you could pick either one but that's what I picked negative 4 will replace y right here and that's a negative 12 Add 12 to both sides, then divide by 2. So when you add 12 to both sides, I get negative 16 plus 12, which is negative 4. Divide by 2, I get x equals negative 2. 
So we have one more time, one solution, independent system. And to support, here's the graph. The two lines are graphed and they meet at negative two, negative four. I think that's good enough. I could do more examples for addition and substitution, but uh, I'm trying to cover the whole topic in one video. In the future, I'll be adding more examples as needed. So let me take you to another topic, which is called inconsistent. What's inconsistent? That means no solution. Let's take a look. I think this one here is ready for substitution. You see the X is by itself. So if you have the choice, just pick substitution. Because sometimes it's easier to grab, sometimes it's easier to use elimination. Let's take care of the substitution method. I'm going to take the expression of x, which is 9 minus 2y here, and substitute that expression in the second equation, which is in red. I'm using blue from the first equation to show you that where it came from. And I'm in the second equation. Instead of reading the whole thing, I'm trying to pause and let you watch and I'll try to speak less as I go. Colors will help a lot to show you what is happening. Now I don't need colors anymore. The Y cancels. I don't need parentheses. Oh, but that's a problem. I came up with 9 equals 13. If you go further and subtract 9 from both sides, you're going to get 0 equals what? 4? Either way, you're getting a message that tells you we do have a contradiction because 9 does not equal to 13. Whenever you get a contradiction like this, that means no solution. And we call the system inconsistent. If you try to graph it, there are going to be parallel lines with different y-intercepts just like on the second slide that I showed you how they look like graphically. Now we talked about one solution many times in different examples. I think inconsistent for now is fair enough. No solution. Let's talk about the other or the third method or title which is called dependent. Here we go. Dependent system. Solve the system x plus 3y equals 2 and 3x plus 9y equals 6. I have a lot of different things to say about this problem. But let's get started with elimination or addition method. So if I want to cancel the x, I need in the same amount but opposite. So I'm going to multiply the first equation by negative 3 focusing on the x. Once you do that and you try to add them, everything cancels. 0 equals 0. That means there is an infinite number of solutions that satisfies both equations because 0 equals 0 is a valid statement. It, don't, it did not give me anything like x equal or y equal. Well, why this happens? Because you're subtracting an equation from itself. I'm using the same color right here. But this is the first equation and this is the second equation. So both equations are the same. Graphically, you're going to graph the same line. So if I'm graphing them with colors, I'm going to graph this in red and graph this in green, for example. They're going to be the same line. You're going to see the two colors on the same graph. So we call the system dependent. If you take your time and graph it, that's how it looks like. You see the blue and you see the red. It's the same line. They're trying to show you that we have two colors. Same line. Now, same system. I want to show you what you could see from different angles, what is happening. Graphically, it's the same line. Using addition method, 
you get zero equals zero. Using the slope intercept form, look what happens. I have two colors. I want to keep the colors and stay focused with you. Here's the red one. X plus 3y equals 2. Subtract x from both sides because all what I want is slope intercept form. I want to leave y by itself. y equals mx plus b. Divide by 3. And that's a slope intercept form. Let's look at the second equation, which is in green. Subtract 3x from both sides. I get 9y equals negative 3x plus 6. Divide by 9 to leave y alone. Simplify those fractions. They divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. I get interesting. See this? Same numbers. So if you graph this, slow by intercept, you start at 2 thirds, you go down 1 over 3. Same thing, you start at 2 thirds, you go down 1 over 3. The system is dependent. Now how about if you divide the second equation, because the second equation is a multiple of 3, right and left by 3. Let's look at that. That's the second equation. I'm using green. Look what happens. I get x plus 9 over 3, which is 3y. 6 over 3, which is 2. But that is same like the first equation. The one in red. Look. It's the same. There is an infinite number of solutions. That's what we call it. The system is called dependent. Now let's take some applications and move on with some different problems because life is not just like solving x and y and 3x and 3y. We have in real life cost, mileage, uh, time, uh, distance, and so on. The cost of a ticket to the circus is $25 for children and $50 for adults. So I'm going to use green for children, blue for adults to stay focused. On a certain day, attendance was 2000 So combined, adults and children were 2000 The revenue is 70000 They collected money selling tickets, 70000 How many children tickets and how many adult tickets were sold? That is the question. As you can see, in real life, it's not given to you straightforward to practice. 5x plus 2y and so on, you have scenarios like these and you want to use math skills to solve. So we're not going to use x and y. We're going to use c and a instead of x and y. Let's have c to represent the number of children and a will be the number of adults. I think that's more clear than x and y. So the total number of people is 2000 was given to me right here. That means now we have one equation, C plus A, number of children plus number of adults walking in, buying tickets, adds up to 2,000. Now, the revenue from all children can be found by multiplying $25 by the number of children C. So their money coming in selling tickets for children is 25C. Imagine if you sell two tickets. That's going to be 2 times 25. 3 tickets, that's going to be 3 times 25, $75. So that makes sense. Money coming in from selling uh, tickets to children. Same concept. The revenue from all adults can be found by multiplying $50 by the number of adults A. So if I sell 4 tickets for adults, 
that's 50 times 4, which is 20, uh, sorry, 200. And that should make sense, 50 times A in general. Now let's combine them and talk about money. The total revenue is 70,000 was given to me right here. So 25C plus 50A should add up to 70,000. Now we have a system. System means the two equations with the two variables. I think we have it. C plus A equals 2,000. 25C plus 50A equals 70,000. Solving the first equation for A, I'm going to subtract C from both sides. And I will get A by itself equals 2,000 minus C. Now we have A by itself. We're going to substitute that expression, 2000 minus C, into the second equation. Here we go. Substitute the expression, 2000 minus C, in the second equation for A and solve for C. This is what I mean. Here's my second equation. Instead of A, I'm going to put what I know about A that we found right here. It's underlined to show you the substitution method. We're going to use the skills of distributive and combined like terms. I don't have to read it. I'm pausing so you could see and be with me. We're going to combine like terms. We're going to subtract 100,000 from both sides. Divide by negative 25. I get C equals 1,200. We're going to go and use that right here because this is ready to tell me how much is A or the first one. doesn't matter. I could actually use this one instead. 12,000. Sorry. 1,200 plus A equals 2,000. Subtract 1,200 from both sides. I get A equals 800. So 1,200 children and 800 adults bought tickets to the circus that day. That's the answer. Okay, here's another example. Just like this one in detail as an application. Hopefully I'm not going too fast here. All my steps are displayed, so you could pause the video and with the timestamps, you could watch it again if you want. Here's my other application problem. Translate to a system of equations and solve. Juan has a pocket full of nickels and dimes. One more time, I'm using colors, nickels and dimes. The total value of the coins is $8.10. The number of dimes is 9 less than twice the number of nickels. This is what takes time from some students to translate or uh, apply. So we'll come back to this. It's underlined to let you know that you have to be careful reading it. You might want to read it twice. And after you write the equation, you might want to double check if it does make sense. How many? Nickels and how many dimes does one have? That is the question. As you can see, it's kind of lengthy to write or read, but let's get into it. Let n be the number of nickels and d be the number of dimes. The value of each nickel is 0 0.05 with the dollar sign. The value of each dime is 0 0.10 with the dollar sign. So what I have, the number of nickels multiplied by 0 0.05, the number of times multiplied by 0.10 should add up to $8.10, which makes sense, right? See, D, if I have two dimes, two times 10 cents, that's 20 cents. And that's how we add up the points or the values the total amount of money to $8.10.
Now looking at this one right here, I want to take you to the side instead of rewriting it and point to it. Here we go. The number of times is, is, will be translated to equal sign. So D equals nine less. Sometimes students say you write like nine minus. No, it's not nine minus. Twice the number of nickels. Twice the number of nickels is not hard to translate. It's two n. Here's the answer. I don't want to confuse you. So if I don't write nine less, I write equals or is the number twice the number of nickels. I'll just write d equals two n. But two n stands at a value somewhere. When you say nine less than that, you have to drop it nine dollars or nine as an amount. Okay. Uh, it's not nine dollars. I said nine dollars by mistake. This is exactly what this statement is about. D equals to n minus nine dimes is nine less than two n. It's not equal to two n. If it says one more than two n, you're gonna say two n plus one. You're gonna raise it by one. Nine less. That means you're gonna drop it nine. Think about it. Now, now we have the system. That's this equation, this equation. Let's box it. It's, I think, ready for substitution. So let's do substitution. Substitute d equals 2m minus 9 into the first equation. So we're going to take this expression and put it right there. I'm underlining it with pencil to show you exactly where it's going to go or where it came from. Instead of d in the first equation, and we're going to write the expression 2m minus 1. Use the distributive. Combine like terms. These are the like terms. Underlined in red. Get 0 0.25, 0 0.20 and 0 0.05. Like 20 and 5 is 25. Still to the right of the decimal. Uh, I'm going to skip the steps of reading this and solving. Give you the right answer. Number of nickels is 36. All right. To find the number of times, I think this is the best one to use. Doesn't matter which one. You could go even the first one. But I mean, if I have the choice, why would you pick the first one if you have this ready? So let's use the second one. Instead of n, we're going to write 36. Do the math. I get d equals 63. So Juan has 36 nickels and 63 dimes. After all this work, if this is worth, let's say, 10 points, 20 points on an exam and you have time, why not? Check the answer. 63 dimes at 10 cents a value for a dime will be... 6.30. So you multiply this by this, you move the decimal once to the left, and that's what you get. 36 nickels at 0 0.05, multiply them together, that's the total amount right here. You get a dollar eighty cents. So that's how much money we're getting from selling or not selling. Uh think about the last problem. How much money comes from the nickels combined and how much money it adds up adding the dimes if you have 63 dimes you have six dollars and 30 cents add them up it adds up to eight dollars ten cents which makes sense because we have a total of eight dollars ten cents that should do it as i said this video is going to be a little bit lengthy but i covered a lot i covered the substitution elimination addition in different methods and consistent 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 comes in two different ways, independent and dependent. So con inconsistent means no solution. Dependent means infinitely many. Independent means they go different directions and they meet at one single point. I think that should do it for this time, for this video. It's about 45 minutes, 46 minutes. Uh, one more time, I'm going to describe everything in the uh, description below as timestamps so you could come back and visit any section and example that you need.
Thank you. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to see some more, and I'll see you in the next one.